Okay, so this is the final iteration of the uh, DIY pneumatic cylinder I made out of a screen door closer. So I've added a bit more uh, mechanical pieces to it. Uh, all this is really meant to do is to keep the uh, is to keep it from turning uh, because it's a cylinder. Obviously, this rod is free to move, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal if it tended to move back and forth a little bit. But because of the spring that is inside this cylinder, the rod, uh, the piston, and the rod turns a whole lot between the extended and contracted positions. Uh, I tested it without this, uh, this little rod here, and it was spinning like a full 90 degrees. So a little, excuse me, a little bit of movement back and forth isn't a big deal, but 90 degrees, that, that's just too much. So I created this, uh, I put this rod here. Now, for this mount for the skull, it's just a little tube that sits over top of the end of the rod, and then a bolt that goes through the hole that's at the end of the rod. A plate that is then screwed into the bottom of the skull and then the rod is welded to it. The rod comes all the way down, it runs the full length of the cylinder and it goes through this little bit of tube which is hose clamped onto the cylinder. Uh, it does move back and forth a little bit during actuation but this limits how much it moves by a pretty big margin uh, to the point where uh, it's an acceptable amount. The mounting is very simple. Uh, you don't want to clamp this cylinder too tight because it isn't the strongest uh, construction in the world. Uh, and you also don't really want to try to weld to it because it'll probably ruin it. So for the mounting, I just have an L bracket on the top. And then if we come underneath it, there's an L bracket on the bottom. And then the cylinder is simply hose clamped to those brackets. Uh, and because they're hose clamped, I can actually loosen up the brackets and raise or lower the cylinder. I can also rotate it to uh, control the alignment of the skull because it does move a bit during actuation. So we'll go over to our controls. Uh, they haven't changed that much. Uh, I have added a regulator, uh, which I scavenged. Uh, we're regulating about 60 PSI. That gets me a good actuation speed without being too violent. For the exhaust, I just stuck a, a bleeder valve in there, which just happened to fit. This is from uh, an automotive application. It's normally used for brakes. Unfortunately, there's not a tapered uh, seat inside here, so I can't actually adjust the retraction speed with this, but it does slow it down a bit. And then we have a T and two fittings here. That's so that I will have a place to connect my other air hose for my other prop. Um, uh, now that I think about it, this probably isn't the ideal setup. Ideally, I would probably want to have the shortest run possible between the valve and the cylinder, and I'd probably want to have a tank full of the regulated air pressure to feed the cylinder. Um, that would probably be the ideal setup, but I don't have that. I just have this, um, and to be honest, it works just fine. Uh, the pressure does drop a little bit during actuation, but I haven't really noticed a change in speed or intensity with which the cylinder moves during any of that, even when uh, rapidly uh, actuating and disengaging it. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect the air hose so that you can see how it works. Okay, it's still leaking because we're still using the same air fitting. You look at the, uh, the regulator here, it's a little blurry because we're not in macro, but we're sitting just under 60 PSI or so. And I still have my really nice uh, cord with the switch on it. So I'll show you how this works. And you can see the skull is rotating a bit when it goes up. Get out a little and that's the spring inside the cylinder that is trying to make it rotate, but the rod prevents that. And you can see now it travels the full length of the cylinder so that it is still in this little tube when it gets to the top. The other thing worth noting is that the bottom of the rod is rounded off. That's so that if it hits these hose clamps, it doesn't get hung up on them. Now if you come over here, I'll show you how the uh, pressure changes. See, right now we're at about 50 psi actuated. 
So if we drop it down, it will climb back up to just under 60. You can see the actuation pressure drops when we uh, actuate it, but it's not really uh, slowing down the skull at all. So this is a uh, perfectly fine setup. And that's it. Uh, I'll probably make another video if there's interest of this thing fully set up.